The final product of this small form factor gaming PC looks great and it plays games like an absolute champ, but oh my God, did this build give me some problems. I built this PC during my Twitch live stream and I don't think I've ever publicly swore as much as I did while building this PC. The building process caused a few headaches, but now that the PC is fully functional, I'm gonna share with you my lessons learned. We'll go over all the parts list, which includes a product that I'll probably never recommend you copy, and then we'll benchmark it to see what it's fully capable of. Before before jumping in the parts list though, I do need to give a proper shout out to ETA Prime. This build was definitely inspired by one of his recent videos where he put a Ryzen 7 9700X inside this tiny five liter case and it's what led me to do this type of build. Speaking of the case, that's exactly what I honestly wouldn't recommend you copy though. I don't even think it has a name other than Mini A24 V5 2.0, which I got from AliExpress for $121. The weird V5 2.0 naming scheme should have probably been a red flag to begin with, but I had all sorts sorts of trouble with this case. To be fair though, there's a good chance that all of the issues that I had with this case were user error because I didn't hear ETA Prime complain about this thing at all. Now, I do like the design as it's rocking a super tiny five liter volume and it's airflow friendly design definitely gets the job done. What also gets the job done is today's video sponsor. We've been expanding our ZTT offices this week and today's video sponsor, Autoful, is definitely coming in clutch. They sent over their new M6 gaming chair and I'm not gonna lie, this gold color is perfect for us as we try to track down 1 million subscribers. Now, not only does this give off high executive vibes with this fancy design, but it's got some hidden features underneath the seat. Literally. You can press these buttons to toggle either a heated seat mode or a ventilation mode to dissipate the nerd's sweat. Yes, this executive gaming chair can either warm you up or cool you down in all the right places. It also has a knob here which will raise and lower the lumbar support internally, which is much appreciated, especially for people like me with a bad back. Overall, this feels super durable and I feel like it's gonna last a long time. These armrests actually raise up too if you want to game on your phone or a mobile PC like a Steam Deck for whenever you need to take a break. And I'll have the link to this auto full M6 gaming chair down in the description so you can check it out for yourself. Big thanks again to them for sponsoring today's video and equipping our new office with a comfy, warm, or cool place to sit. Getting back to this case though, one of the main issues I personally had was trying to install the flex power supply in there because it didn't come with instructions and the mounting mechanism is just super unorthodox. Did this come with instructions? No, it's from AliExpress. There's no instructions. Basically, you first install a bracket around the top of the PSU and then that slots into the top of the case, but then you have to mix and match different size brass standoffs and extension standoffs to get it to perfectly match the height of your PSU. After a few beers and a couple of WTF moments, I finally figured this out, but the one thing I never figured out was the feet. The case came with these two metal feet to get it up off the ground, which is definitely required, but we couldn't find the right hardware to use, so currently the screws are sticking downward and would obviously completely jack up your desk if you used it like this. I'm 100% sure that this isn't how it's supposed to be, and we're just not using the correct hardware, but we couldn't find the hardware for it. There's a chance that I threw it away after a couple beers, I don't know, but this is exactly why there's a mouse pad in every single shot in this video. Without the feed installed, then the GPU would have no fresh air underneath to intake, so it's definitely required as far as I'm concerned. And speaking of which, this GPU is none other than my personal favorite in the low profile category, the Gigabyte RTX 4060 LP. This is pretty much the fastest low profile gaming GPU, and we've tested it before and it runs evenly with a full-size desktop RTX 4060. The amount of power that this little card can output is insane, and we'll show that soon in the benchmarks. Pairing with the 4060 LP, we have the Ryzen 5 7500F. This I also snagged off AliExpress, and this time it was just $115. I've said this so many times already, but that's just incredible value for the price, especially considering that it allows you to jump into the AM5 socket, which opens up a ton of upgrade potential in the future. The motherboard I originally installed this CPU into was the Gigabyte A620i AX, but here's where where we ran into even more issues. Here we go again. You may have already seen the YouTube short or TikTok about this, but I purchased this brand new on Amazon for $129 and it definitely did not arrive brand new. I actually didn't discover this until I was on the live stream about to install the CPU, but the first dead giveaway was that someone else's CPU cooler bracket was still installed on the motherboard. Someone clearly bought this on Amazon, returned it and forgot to uninstall these brackets and then Amazon never checked it before selling it back to me again. However, there was also another dead giveaway Way that this was used, and that's because their SSD was also still installed. M.2, now there's no M.2. This is a two terabyte Acer GM7000, which is a highly rated drive and definitely not cheap. The big question now becomes, oh, I meant to grab it. 
The big question now becomes, what is on this SSD? There very well could just be someone's personal data from a gaming PC, but there could also be a virus, Bitcoin, Diddy party videos, or the Dr. Disrespect DMs. Show the message, release the message. To this day, we have still yet to fire this up and check it out, but I will 100% be doing that sometime soon, and we're gonna make a video on it, so get subscribed so you don't miss that one. So yeah, I still proceeded with the board anyway, despite being clearly used. I did swap in my own Teen Group MP44 L1 terabyte drive in there, and sure enough, when we got this PC back to the studio, it didn't fire up at all. Sam concluded that the motherboard was indeed bad. Go figure, that's why someone else returned it. So I went ahead and returned it myself back to Amazon, and then I picked up an actually brand new ASRock Phantom Gaming A620i Lightning Wi-Fi for the same exact price. It sucks that we had to delay the project by a few days waiting for a motherboard replacement, but I did get a free two terabyte highly rated SSD out of it, so I think it still was a small dub. Moving on through the parts list though, we have the RAM, and this is the silicone power Zenith Gaming 32 gigabyte DDR5 kit clocked at 6,000 megahertz. The cooler for the 7500F is a Thermalright AXP 120X67 ARGB, which is pretty much the tallest cooler that will fit inside this case. And for the power supply, I got this Apivia ITX PFC 500 watt, and like I said earlier, it's a flex sized unit. I've used one of these before, but because the case is so small, there's no way that you could even fit an SFX power supply in there, so they also make these flex units which are even smaller than that. I have no idea what PSU tier this is, or if it's a good model or not, but this is the one that ETA Prime used in that video, and since it didn't explode on him, I figured I'd just copy that. All in all, here's what the final parts list is looking like after the motherboard swap, and my total came out to just over $900. $900 for a 7500F and RTX 4060 isn't the best price performance that's possible in a gaming PC these days, but we can't ever forget about the ITX tax, which will always hurt those FPS per dollar numbers. $121 for an off-brand, no-named case is terrible in terms of value, and we also have to pay extra for the ITX motherboard as well. If you're already into these small form factor builds, then none of this will be news to you, but if you're new to PC building, then just know that ITX builds always cost a lot more than something with equal performance in a micro ATX or ATX size case. But now let's move on to the benchmarks and check this thing out. Here's Cyberpunk running in 1080p and high settings, and when using the built-in benchmarking tool, we got a solid FPS average of 92. Here's Modern Warfare 3, again with the built-in benchmark, and in 1080p with balance settings, this five liter build cranked out 137 FPS. And for a super demanding game, we have Black Myth Wukong, which I already gave up on because I'm way too old and slow, I guess, but in 1080p high, we got an average of 86 frames per second. Here's the rest of the games we tested, and as you can see, most of our testing was done up towards 1080p higher ultra settings, which isn't really a surprise for the RTX 4060 in 2024. Per usual, we also uploaded a full dedicated benchmarking video for the 7500F and RTX 4060 LP combo over on the ZTT Extras YouTube channel. And just as a final reminder, if you're looking for some totally free PC building help for your next custom PC, head to zttbuildhelp.com. There's a few really valuable resources that I personally use for every single build, as well as some templates of different price ranges that you can easily copy and paste for yourself. But yeah, overall, when it's all said and done, I am happy with how this build turned out. It just wasn't an easy process getting to this point. It's definitely nice and tiny, but still packing a performance punch, which was the goal. But if you're looking for a different way of building an ITX gaming PC that wasn't so painful, then feel free to click the video that's on the screen now.